You want to go? Let's go. See how he's moving into the pressure that I asked him to go in. That was a big deal that he moved into that pressure. I asked and I sent him with the whip. He wasn't really paying attention. I didn't have his attention real good. So I'm not going to let that slide and just let him go off in the direction that he wanted to go. I'm going to send him in the direction that I want him to go in. I'm going to make the decisions. You're going to go where I tell you to go. Now you'll see as I'm lunging him, he was doing this last couple of days. I'm sure he'll keep doing it. He looks to the outside a lot. He really is not respecting my authority. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change directions pretty aggressively. I'm going to give him a reason to want to look at me. Him looking out is him telling me that my authority is not even significant enough for him to look at me to pay attention to what I'm asking him to do. Change directions again. And ask him to turn and work hard. It's like a person that doesn't want to look at you when you're talking to him. That's what he's wanting to do. He doesn't want to look at me when I'm talking to him. Like having an employee that won't look at you when you give him something to do. His attention is not on me, it's on something else. So he's not going to do what I ask him to do because I don't have his attention. To get his attention, we're going to work. There we go. I'm going to make him not having his attention on me much harder than paying attention to me. Same thing as everything else. Right thing easy, wrong thing hard. Again, I'm going to be hard when he's not paying attention. I asked him and he ignored me. He kept on going. You see me, I changed directions a lot against the wall. And this is the third day I've worked him. He knows the routine. You saw him change directions out here a minute ago without the wall. He knows the routine, but he's trying to do what he wants to do. And go. He did his part. He put effort into it. I got easier. I still swatted the whip because I wasn't expecting to put effort into it. Next time I'll wait and see if he puts effort into it. Before. Yep. See. I asked nice. He didn't do it. Then I got aggressive. Ask, tell, demand. So ask, tell, demand. I'm going to ask with my body position. I'm going to tell with the rope. I'm going to demand with the whip. So if I step out here, ask, tell, didn't have to go to demand. If you notice when I lunge, I don't keep this hand out all the time. I don't keep telling him. I, I relax my arm a little bit. I don't threaten with the whip. My body position is behind the drive line telling him to go. Now the last couple of times we made this left turn, we had to do it at the wall. I helped him a little bit by bumping his face. You're not going to pull on me. He tried to pull on me there. He pulls on me. I'm going to give him a bump. There we go. Pay attention. If he would have been paying attention, he would have known that that bump wasn't to turn, that the bump go on, was to quit pulling on me. But I like the fact that he's looking at me now asking me trying to figure out what he's supposed to do that's progress I'm not gonna let him stop worst thing I could do right now is let him stop and let him 
not have to work because he looked at me. I expect him to look at me before we do anything else. I do want to reward that he looked at me, but looking at me is, is I, that's expected. I'm not going to reward that. He's got to do something better than that to get the reward. There we go. That was a little effort in the turn. I did have to remind him with my hand with the line, but I didn't have to send him with the whip. Every time I do one of these videos, I get all kind of comments about intimidating him and making him scared, threatening him with the whip. You can do it without the whip. Some of that is true, but you're not going to get any of it done. You're not going to get a horse to a very good quality without that. He needs to know I'm in charge. This is not an equal relationship. This is not an equal partnership. I am the leader, he is the follower. Equal partnership with a horse will get you hurt. There we go. We didn't have to go all the way to the wall on the left turn. I did send him with the whip, but I was a lot softer about it. <coughs> I didn't totally take the pressure away. Now right there, he kind of came into my space. We're going to have to do something about that if he does it again. My space is however far this whip will reach. He is not allowed to come into this space. Anything with him inside this space, I could get hurt. Talked to a lot of people that have gotten hurt lunging horses. And it was all because they let that horse come into this space. Not allowed to do that. Change directions. There we go. That's how it's supposed to be. Pick your shoulders up, change directions, go the other way. Stay out this distance. Just about into my space. Because in my space, I will swat him with the whip. I'm going to swat him with the whip before he kicks me with his leg. If you're afraid to swat one with the whip, you're the one that's going to get hurt. The whip is for my protection. If he doesn't come into my space, I'm not going to get hurt. Good boy. All of these horses that you see me work, these, all these horses are horses that were sent to me because they had a problem. They're all here to fix a problem or to excel in training. I am not intentionally going to show you that problem. I'm not going to let him be dominant towards me just so you can see that problem. These horses came to me to be fixed. I'm going to fix the horse and I'm showing you the process. If I show you, if I let him be dominant towards me, just to show you the problem, I'm not doing what's best for the horse. I'm doing what's best for views. And I don't respect any trainer that's gonna let a horse do that just so it gets views. It's not what's best for the horse. There we go. I feel like I've made a lot of progress here. This is the first day that he has started changing directions out here without me using a wall to stop. Still not perfect, but he's trying to do what I ask him to do. I'm starting to get some effort to be good. He's still looking away. That's not good right there, but I'm going to reward the progress that I'm getting. Now, I don't like him coming into my space. We're going to back back up. I did not invite him into my space. He's allowed to come in. I'm gonna put you back to work. 
he's allowed to come to me about one horse length away and that's as close as I'm gonna let a horse come to me. That last horse length is my option to close that space in. Good boy. How he's looking around, oh, back up. How he's looking around, taking everything in. He's been out here before, this isn't new. All right, I'm gonna make you walk, I'm gonna make you lunge. I'm not sure if he's looking around to just look around. This is his third day out here. Everything that's out here, he has seen before. Either he doesn't have a very good memory and he forgot it, which shouldn't happen, or he's telling me that he's in charge again. Not gonna accept that. That is what I believe the root cause of this horse's problems. Just like him pulling his foot away from me when I was picking it up, cleaning it. Seems very minor. And a lot of owners let their horses get away with that. And they're just asking for a problem. Good boy. He did all of that on position and me just swapping hands. He's doing a better job of not looking to the outside. Got ahead of the wall that time. There you go. Give him a chance to stop again. Now, not yet, but soon, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, I'll keep that whip in my hand and I'll start backing him back out of my space with the whip. Like I said, the length of that whip is my space. If I want to close that space, I will close that space, not him. That, to me, that is a big deal for maintaining my safety. See, he wants to come to me. He's doing much, much better staying back. I don't mind him looking some. There's a way a horse can look to just be aware of their surroundings. Oh, we're gonna go back to work again. This is just short attention span is all this is. This is young horse. Go back to work. Gonna have, he needs to work on his attention span. There's a difference in how a horse looks around that he can, looks around to just take it in and understand or look around intentionally to ignore me. You saw when I very first started, he never did look at me. He looked at everything else but me. That is ignoring me. Just a minute ago when I stopped, A minute ago when I stopped, he would look at me, he'd look around, he'd look at me and look around. That's okay, I'll accept that. I want a horse to be aware of their surroundings and then wait for me to tell them what to do. You gonna try this again? Good boy, now that was nice. Turned up, stop, stop right there. That I'll take. A paw on us because he's itchy. He's sweating, he's itching. Now I'm going to attach my reins. I am going to attach them to the bit. I know he's been to two other trainers that have ridden him. The owner said she has ridden him. He should know how to follow his nose, follow a bit. Again, I'll throw the reins around and, and handle them as if he's a broke horse. If he's not, if there's a problem, then I need to know about it. Just kind of walk, see if I got his attention. It's not too bad. He's staying here with me. He's looking around, but he's staying with me. And tighten us another hole, I believe. Now, what I want to do, we'll get the mounting block out here. I'll grab the mounting block, bring it out here in the middle so you can see. I'll get it. I 
I have no idea how he's going to behave when I get ready to get on him. Most of these horses that I get in are going to be mounted from a mounting block. So I work everything with a mounting block. If a horse can be mounted from a mounting block, it can be mounted from the ground. But if all you practice is the ground, he's not going to know to stand in a mounting block. Just like that. See his attention bouncing all around? Again, that is young horse. He's got to focus. I expect I'm going to have something similar when I get on his back. Let's see what we get here. I'm not going to be in a huge hurry to just step up there. I want him to wait for me. We see that he's got a short attention span. He needs to work on that attention span. Let's see what happens when I stand up in the saddle. Really don't want to step up while he's pulling on me. It's going to pull me off balance. This is the first time I've been on his back. Not sure what to expect. I do know the owner said he's been ridden by the two trainers and her. Hopefully he don't buck. We will see. But what I really want to accomplish here, I really just want to stand. I want this to be the reward for the work we did over there. I say I'm gonna have to do some work on that. She did tell me that one of the trainers that had him was trying to bridle him way up, way more than what a green horse should be ready for. And that's probably why I'm getting this. I'm gonna to have to work on that, but that's a symptom. That's not, that's not a cause. Everything's divided into symptoms and causes. Just like when you're sick, you'll run a fever. The fever is the symptom of whatever the cause is. Notice I've, I've got his head to the left and I'm gonna keep it to the left. One thing that's gonna do is help keep his attention on me. It's gonna help soften his body up. It's gonna help soften his body, which I'm gonna need this for steering later. His back don't feel rounded like he wants to buck, but he just, his attention is all over the place. This would be the kind of horse that would forget you was on their back. I'm sure he's itching from dripping sweat, and I'm sure that's bothering him. Pull his head the other way. Let's see if he'll let me. It gets, gets stopped. Don't like when they pull like this. I'm not as strong as I used to be. A horse can out pull me easily. Get his head around. Uh -uh. So pull him. Get his head around this way. There we go. That pulling was trained in there unintentionally. Horses don't just do that. And it's a little bit softer this direction. I'm not really asking him to walk. I'm just sitting here. I'd really like for him to relax. I think this horse is pretty nervous about being ridden. Go back to the left. I'm not gonna pull his chin in, but we gotta flex. He's gotta give his head, we gotta steer. I might go back and do some driving with him. 
We'll see. Seems a little. When the cows get a little riled up, he seems to get a little riled up. There we go. This is just a plain D ring snaffle. Nothing special about it. Smooth mouth. There we go. Starting to relax a little bit. His body was real tense when I first got on. I know this flexing and standing here is boring to watch, but this is something he's got to have. And that, see how much softer my hand is? Let's go back this way. Nope. Give me your face. Turn this way. There we go. Go back that way. You want to look right? Let's bend your left. He's going to need a lot of work on his face. He just felt his body get pretty stiff right then. When he can't look at what he wants to look at, I feel his body get stiff. He wanted to look at Mac over there. There we go. I know we're kind of creeping closer to the camera. I'm not really asking to go anywhere. I just wanted to bend. And they always seem to stop with my back to the camera. When, uh, if you're new to my channel, I train horses all day, every day. And basically, two mornings a week, we just video what I'm working that day. Nothing is planned out, really. Nothing is scripted, like a lot of what trainers do, you, you see exactly what I'm doing. Getting better, there we go. Good boy, bring this one around. Back around this way. Finally making some progress and I'm not even facing the camera where you can see. There we go. He wants to look at the cows. I don't know. I, he has seen them here. I might have worked him out here a couple of days. He's seen them here, but probably when he came the other day, it's probably the, or when I worked him out here the other day, it's probably the first time he's ever seen a cow. Would be my guess by the way he's behaving. There we go. That. No, oh, excuse me. That is much better progress. Now I feel like now he's leaning on me again. Gotta have some steering. I always say when I first get on a horse, first thing I want to make sure is that I control speed and direction. I want to control what direction we go in and how fast we get there. Don't feel like I have that on him yet. Speed or direction. There we go. He didn't pull on me that as hard that time to get his head back. Now the whole kind of psychology of this workout, I worked him pretty hard on the lunge line over there. And this here is much easier physically but it's harder mentally. So the, the first part of that exercise, first part of what we did today was mostly physical. This is mostly mental. I'm telling him here, whatever you want to pay attention to out there, you gotta give me your head. You gotta give me your attention. His ears aren't coming back at me on me like they need to be. See, they're locking forward onto something else. 
needs to focus on me. So I'm going to go ahead and quit on this. I'll be doing a couple more days of this before I really ask him to even walk forward. Some, uh, I don't know that this stuff was skipped when he was started, but it's definitely not where I would want it to be for one that I'm riding. I'm sure that kicking, there ain't no flies around us. That kicking is probably from sweat running down me. Let's see if he'll stand still. Let me step off. Okay. So this is Bubba. I'll be doing some more videos of him. I'll put a playlist up here to his videos when I have a couple of them. Until next time, thank you for watching.